Hello my fellow gamers and welcome to Pera Philosophy Videos. Today I bring you an interview with one of the developers of a new indie tactical RPG game set in the Second World War, Hans von Knut Skafogen, who is the creative director at Porta Play. Their game is called Broken Lines and it is coming out on Steam on the 25th of February. I would like to use this opportunity to thank him very much for answering my top 10 questions about his game and to tell you that my introduction video to this game will be up very soon as well. This interview video is a new type of content on my channel and I have each and every one of you to thank for making it possible. Because without you watching my videos and subscribing to my channel, I would never get this kind of access. Each one of you who subscribes validates my work and lets developers and publishers know I'm well worth their time. Now let me start with what inspired Hans and his team to make a game set in the Second World War. I think that you will be surprised, just like I was, that they actually like fantasy settings and even love science fiction. But they chose the Second World War setting because they wanted to make a game with mechanics centered around close range combat while giving a familiar story a new spin. As Hans puts it, we wanted a setting and a genre which was easy to establish, so that the players would quickly feel at home, before we threw the curveball and introduced the alternate history elements. But we also wanted to do a game with a different mood than the classic World War II games that take place in Europe or the Pacific, so we chose an Eastern European setting which we really love. This way, we could again give the players something familiar, but add something new and strange. The storyline is really interesting and since neither Hans or I want to spoil anything for you, it's enough to say that while the setting is based on the real history, the story itself has a lot of alternate twists. Another thing that is really surprising about Broken Lines is the actual combat mechanics, as they are a blend of turn-based and real-time, a true hybrid. So the developers had created something new and they jokingly called it, and I quote, company of heroes for gamers who like to relax while they play. And moreover, as Hans told me, our original ambition was to make a game that was very tactical, but we also believe that real-time tactics games sometimes trade reaction time for tactical skills. On the other hand, pure turn-based games are sometimes a bit abstract. So while we like the style of Frozen Synapses combat, we tried to make something that was more streamlined and easy to play, while being more tactical. The result is a game which is very tactical and at the same time shows both cool action and the chaos of war, due to simultaneous movement and action. A result that we are very happy with. As someone who has experienced this gameplay firsthand, I can tell you that it takes some time getting used to, because the turn-based part, when you give orders, does lull you in, and then you get a rude awakening when you end the turn and the situation develops in real time in front of your eyes, very often quite different than what you had planned or expected. And once I got over the initial shock, I started to love that feeling. Besides asking about the reasons behind choosing a World War II setting, I also wanted to find out how the developers at Porta Play develop their story and characters. For me personally, the story and the characters are the crucial thing for enjoying an RPG game. On this subject, Hans was very forthcoming. He explained that the plot, characters and the gameplay concept were all developed in sync as the game took shape. So we chose an Eastern European setting which we really love and combined it with inspiration from comic books like Hellboy and The Last Brigade, illustrated by Peter Sneijberg who is also the artist for all the characters and cutscenes in Broken Lines. But we quickly dialed it down on the alien tentacles. We developed the plot at the same time as we made the characters. The point was to focus on the people at war, the dilemmas they face and how they react to it. When we had the cast, the plot and the setting, we tried to imagine how each character would react to the situation that they are in. So while we nailed the start, general storyline and possible endings, a lot of ideas for levels, text events and key moments grew organically as the cast interacted with the plot. And this is in my humble opinion the real selling point and the most unique aspect of this game compared to any other World War II themed game. Soldiers aren't heroes, nor saints, raising above the morals of all others but regular folks with real feelings, attitudes, social statuses, tempers and dialects and when they express those differences, sparks fly and opinions expressed with firearms in hand are very hard to ignore. With this in mind, I wanted to understand what emotions did the development team expect their game would inspire in their players. Hans explained to me that they wanted to create a story about what can happen to people under pressure during a war, rather than about the war itself. So the point was for the players to get attached to their squad members through exploring their interesting side stories, managing each of them and their personality quirks so that when they lost them in a mission, they would really feel that sense of loss. And it's best I quote him on this part. So even though it is a game that takes place during a war, it is a game about what people do to pursue honor 
and or to survive and how they justify it. Which also means that we did not try to convey a specific emotion, but moreover leave some room for the player to feel different emotions and take a moral stance on things that can, and often will, happen in the grey areas of war. This is best experienced in the mini story events that pop up in the missions where characters are met with new situations, express their opinions and plans and the player is left with two choices, which are not always just good okay. or bad and both have consequences. The players can sometimes only choose the one that they can live with and not the one that is universally good or bad. Next I wanted to find out just how hard it was to create a good balance for the game's difficulty and what are the devs favorite game difficulty options and parameters. I was personally amazed to find out that not only did the AI system take almost full 2 years to perfect, but also that they perfected it so much that it became almost unbeatable. As Han said it, we initially actually developed an enemy AI which was too good. Now while most of you might say, well that is a good thing and I would agree with you, Hans further explains why that wouldn't work out the way we might think. They, he means the AI soldiers, really valued their lives and ran away whenever the player threw a grenade or flanked them. They were also very good at flanking the player, often moving out of sight, then popping up at your flanks, performing picture perfect ambushes. Realistic yes, but really frustrating for the player. Dumbing them down to a more reasonably fun to play against level did kinda hurt, but made the game much more fun to play. So it is true what they say, sometimes you need to kill your darlings. So the whole realism versus fun balance is one of our core focus areas in regards to game balancing. And just to make it clear, using in-game options you can still choose to play against that too good AI. Turn everything up, enable all options for the AI and have a go at it. Just remember, you were giving fair warning. One of the more stranger and less often asked questions came to my mind next, but I went with it anyway, so I asked Hans, did you put any easter eggs in the game? I'm going to go straight to the quote for this one. Yes there are, both in levels, achievements and the credit list. But if I told you more, I would have to kill you. And eat you. I had a really good laugh at that and now I really want to find those easter eggs in the final game. After that I went back to the topics of challenge and difficulty of the playthroughs in Broken Lines. So I asked Hans how could the players using the options or even self-imposed rules create for themselves the most difficult scenario. He explained, game has a difficulty system where you can tweak a lot of the stuff individually. Tweaking the player enemy health and damage is of course an easy way of making the game more difficult. Or you can make the soldiers die the first time they are downed instead of allowing one revive before the permanent death kicks in. But these are also the more classic way. If you really want to challenge yourself, we actually left in some of the old too hard AI in the game. If you turn on enemies can use weapon abilities like suppression or knockdown shots or enemies can use explosives, most enemies sometimes carry grenades or the two most nasty ones enemies can move more freely meaning that they are not leashed and they will move more around when flanked and flank you more and enemies can use teamwork ganging up on you and try to surround you. While I was asking questions, I also wanted to give the viewers of this video a bit of a glimpse into the organizational and management side of developing a game. So I asked what was the most challenging part of developing Broken Lines. One of the big challenges was to balance the realism versus alternate history. First and foremost, we wanted to create a story about what can happen to people under pressure during a war rather than about the war itself. We wanted to depict the horrors of war from the perspective of the soldiers, yes. so the focus had to be on the men and women in the squad. We wanted you to get to know them by exploring their interesting side stories, manage each of them and really feel a sense of loss when they died. Initially we experimented with different historical locations and events, but it was very hard to avoid deviating from history when we worked on the interplay within the group, setting up interesting player choices and plotting out the campaign. So we decided that the game would be very realistic with regards to the era, such as the people, customs, weapons, abilities and combat tactics employed at the time. However, we wanted to wrap it in a location, setup and story that was completely fictional. This gave us more freedom to fully focus on the player's choices and their impact on the story arcs. Communicating this balance to the players has also been a challenge, one we have not tackled 100% which have resulted in some understandable questions from the players about historical accuracy and female characters in the game. This is something that even a AAA developer went through some time ago and without mentioning the name of the game and opening up that can of worms all over again, I just wanted to say that I found this to be a very bold move by the developers and I understand why Hans brought it up as one of the more difficult things. In closing, I wanted to find out two more things. 
points for the future projects, expansions and DLCs for this game. And what message about the war in general do the developers at Porta Play want to send with their game? Hans was kind enough to explain that both a DLC for the Broken Lines and a full sequel are in the planning stages. And that, I will quote him here, the DLC will probably be focused on challenge levels and adding more gameplay mechanics, weapons, abilities and enemy types to the normal campaign. As the game can play and end very differently on the second playthrough, we really want to push for replayability. The sequel? Well, we can't reveal that now. It will probably be bigger, better and stronger and as mysterious. And as for the message to the players, Hans had a very good note that I can fully agree on as somebody who lived through not one, but two wars in as little over as 10 years when I was a kid. Our core message about war is that wars are never right or just and they can make people do horrible things, but blaming the people involved is easy for the ones who have never experienced wars. It is really hard to survive or to be victorious without having done some questionable things. It is very hard to be involved and coming out with your hands clean. So I guess our message about wars is that avoiding them is the best way. The only winning move is not to play. And with that, I would like to finish this video, invite you to stay tuned in Broken Lines on my channel and also more videos like this one.